So in the last video, we talked about how come there is so much variation that exists in the population. Of course, it's a combination of what evolution is creating over time and the fact that there are multiple genes in the population which have a lot of relationships, including advanced genetic relationships, that are different for different people, and that's why it has a lot of different looks. But remember that no matter how you look at it, a population will be a group of members of the same species or members which can interbreed. Because remember, for example, it is possible for two different species to actually have children. For example, a lion and a tiger can do offspring to create what we call a liger. You see some examples of them here. That's the same thing about the mule. But these things will not be capable of interbreeding. So they're not really part of the populations that they, they, they represent. And they're not going to be passing on their genes since they're infertile. So populations are going to be isolated from each other. Uh, or from other populations of different species, which means each specific population has what we call a gene pool. But to define this gene pool or how, how, what exactly is the population is like, you have to look at what is called an allele frequency or the frequency of the existence of each ver type of one type of gene. To keep this simple, we're going to talk about a trait that only has two types of genes because remember, in reality, it's going to be much more complex than that because there are so many traits with multiple uh, genes to determine the trait. Sometimes a, a gene determines many traits. Sometimes there are multiple alleles for each trait. Sometimes there's more than one gene to determine the relationship with things like epistasis. And sometimes multiple uh, genes will, will act together with the environment to create the trait. But to simplify things, that's considered that a certain character is, is actually determined by only two alleles. One, each alley determines one version of that character or one trait. How common is each alley or each trait in the population is going to help us define that population or the gene pool of the population. Now, let's say there are 500 flowering plants, okay? And these 500 flowering plants divide themselves into 480 red flowers and 20 white flowers. Now, remember that idea of dominance from the Mendelian lecture? In this case, red is dominant over white. So they're saying here there's going to be more red than white, but that's not because they're, they're dominant. Remember, dominance does not imply it's going to be more common in the population. It only implies that it's uh, more likely to show up in, if present in the gene, genotype. The recessive will only show up if by itself. But if the recessive was advantageous, it would be more common. So see how you have to put genetics and evolution together? Uh, the dominance does not mean more common. It only means that it dominates over the other color. All right? But what means more common is only going to be what is more beneficial or more fit in evolutionary terms. But it appears that in this case, the dominant will also be more fit because there's way more dominant than recessive, at least for now. So as you see here, they're saying that there's 320 of those red flowers are going to be homozygous dominant and 160 of them are going to be heterozygous. Because remember, there's two ways of looking dominant. You can look dominant if you have this genotype or if you have that genotype. But if you want to look recessive, there's only one way of looking recessive. If you have the homozygous recessive genotype. That's why the numbers of that genotype are going to match the numbers of the recessive phenotype. It's one and the same because there's only one way of looking recessive. But notice that the numbers of the dominant uh, look do not necessarily match the genotypes down here because it's going to be split between the two genotypes that cause the dominant look. Now, how do we determine the allele frequencies in the population? All right. Well, in this genotype here, you're going to see two big R's. On this genotype here, you see one big R. So if you're trying to count the total number of big R alleles in the population or how common that specific trait is going to be in the population, you have to get two big R's from here uh, times 320 because 320 of the members of the population will have big R twice. And so that's what you do. You put 320 times 2 to give us a total of 640 mem members of the population or 640 big R's in the population. But there's another 160 big R's in the heterozygous look. So when you add those together, there's a total of 800 big R's in the population. So that's how many big R alleles you will find in this particular population. 
Now, you could do the same thing with the recessive. In this case, there's 20 recessive, but uh, homozygous recessive uh, genotypes, each with two little r's in them. So that means that you're going to have to get 20 times 2 for a total of 40 uh, little r's or little r values in the population. But there's another 160 in the heterozygous uh, genotype, and therefore, you're going to have a total of 200 recessive values in the population. And if you add both of those together, you see there's a total of a thousand copies of this gene. And for this gene, 200 will be of the recessive LU and 800 will be of the dominant LU. Then you can do the math and 200 out of a thousand, that gives you about 0.2 or 20% of the popu of the LUs are going to be recessive. And then 80% of the LUs are going to be dominant. And that's how we calculate LU frequencies. Basically, you... You calculate based on the number of members of the population which are homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. Remembering that each homozygous look carries two values for that particular uh, type of gene. All right? So you can have to practice this to see if you actually know how to do it. And there's worksheets on my website that you can do it. But remember, to describe the population, you can look at the alley frequencies as well as the genotype frequencies and the phenotype frequencies. So remember, little r, little r now is going to be white, okay? But now big r, little r is going to be pink, and then big r, big r is going to be red. And we're going to do it this way to actually see a different kind of population. So thinking about that, what happens if I tell you then, giving you the phenotypes here, okay? I'm going to give you the phenotypes. There are 200 white flowers. 500 pink flowers, and 300 red flowers. So what does that mean? Since in this case, that each genotype has a different look, it's very easy for us to figure out the genotype frequencies. Because you see there's a total of 1,000 flowers in this population, because you just do the math and see there's a total of 1,000 flowers. Now, if 200 of those flowers are going to be white, that means 20% of the flowers are going to be white. And that's 20% for the phenotype ratio, and as well as the homozygous recessive uh, ratio. Because remember, the phenotype recessive ratio always matches the homozygous recessive genotype ratio because there's only one way of looking recessive. There's 500 pink flowers in the population. That means half the population is going to be uh, of the heterozygous look. All right. In this case, the heterozygous looks different. So it's a different example from the ones we did before. So 0.5 of the population will be like that. And there's also 300 red flowers in the population. That means 30% of the population will be homozygous dominant. Now remember, if this was complete dominance, 80% of the population would have that look like we did in the previous problem. All right? We would have the dominant look. And we would not be able to differentiate between them uh, just by looking at the numbers of red. We would have to do something else to figure that out. And that's what this is all about as well. All right? Now let's actually calculate the alley frequencies based on what we just did. All right? So if there are 200, which are big R, uh, little r, little r, 500, which is our big R, little r, and 300, which are big R, big r. We did this last time. That means you're going to have, from the first one here, 400 little r, because remember, each of these have little r twice. From this one, you're going to put another 500 little r and 500 big r. And on the bottom here, you're going to have big r twice for a total of 600 big r. So if you do the math here, you're going to see there's a total of 2,000 values in this population. All right? Now, out of those 2,000 values, what are the value frequencies? Well, they're going to be 400 plus, nine, plus 500 little r, so a total of 900 total out of 2,000. If you do the math, you're going to see that 0.45 of the population, or 45%, is going to have little r uh, values. And then you're going to see that 1,100 out of 2,000, or 0.55, or 55% of the values are going to be big R. So now you see how you calculate the phenotype ratios, the genotype ratios, and the um, alley frequencies. All right, so I hope you understand how to do this. But let's do yet another example to make sure that we know how to do this. This time I'm giving you again the, so just to skip a step, or I'm already giving you the genotype of frequencies. In other words, how many of each type of genotype you see. By the way, notice that these two are going to be complete dominant so that, so that be, both of them will make the frog look green. So there's a total of 260 uh, organisms that look dominant and there's only 140 that look recessive. And that means that the total number of people in the population would, in this case would be 
260 plus 140, which will be 400. So I could divide 260 by 400 and find out the, the ratio or the frequency of the dominant look. And I can divide 140 by 400 to find the ratio of the recessive look. That's how we do the phenotype ratio. But let's look at the, uh, at the genotype in allele frequencies, all right? So if you calculate the genotype frequencies, you will see that, uh, that there's going to be, all right? So let's do each one of them. The genotype frequency is going to be 100 uh, of the big G over the total 400 that you have. So that means you're going to be 0.25 are going to be big G, big G. For the 160 divided by 400, that means 40% are going to be big G, little g. And 140 of the 400 are going to be recessive, so it means 0.35 or 35% are going to be little g, little g. So see how you do it, right? Similarly, if you're doing the phenotypes like we just did before, all right, you will see that you're going to get 260 out of 400, which are going to look green, or 65% of the population, and 140 out of 400, which are going to look brown or yellow, which is 35% of the population. And notice that the genotype frequency for the recessive always matches the phenotype frequency for the recessive because there's only one way of looking recessive. But since there's two ways of looking dominant here, this 260 will translate to that one over there. But to calculate the allele frequencies then, what do I do? What do I do? I, I, I do add them up, right? If I'm going to have 100 here times 2, that's 200, plus 160, I have 360 of the big Gs out of a total of 800 genes. You can do the math to figure out how much the total. It will be 0.45 big Gs, or 45%. And of the little Gs, you do something similar. 2 times 200, 140, uh, which is 440, if you add the 160, which are here in the heterozygous look, which means 55% of the population is going to be little g alleles, all right? Now, there is a shortcut to get to the allele frequencies if you already know the genotype frequencies. This is the result of the thing we just did. But notice that the homozygous dominant genotype will only have the dominant alleles. And so you can count this uh, genotype frequency that you found for the homozygous dominant towards the allele frequency. But on the genotype frequency of the heterozygous, half of that could be accounted by the big big G, but only, and then the other half has to be accounted for the little g, right? So take, keep that in mind, because that genotype is made of both. And then the, on the homozygous recessive, the whole genotype frequency is accounted for by both the little g alleles that are in it. So that means that there's a shortcut that you can use to calculate the allele frequencies. You can get this ratio, and then get half of this ratio over here, and add together, and you should get that ratio. So let's show you how that works. So basically, because the big G, big G, or the homozygous dominant only has the big G, and the heterozygous will have both, and then the homozygous recessive will have only the little g or the recessive value, you count the ratio of the homozygous uh, do dominant completely, and you count half of the heterozygous ratio towards the big G. So that means it's going to be 0.25 plus 0.2 which should give you 0.45. And you do the same kind of principle for the homozygous recessive, and you can account half of, what, of the ratio of the heterozygous, so you get 0.2, and all of the homozygous recessive ratio, so which is 0.35, which should give you 0.55. So that's the rule. You get all of the homozygous ratio plus half of the heterozygous ratio towards the, the ratio of alleles for that kind of alleles. So, this is a shortcut that can be very useful in order for you to determine the allele frequency if you already know the genotype frequencies. All right. Now, on the next video, we're going to be talking about how to use this to actually do uh, Punnett squares and population predictions across generations. I'll see you guys then.